I tell you of all my dreams, I tell you that I'm cold. You offer me some comfort, but I should have known, should have known it was only for a little while. Like, if someone tries to slam the door on your face, break the fucking door, kick it down, get in that room. Like, if you feel called to, get in that room. <laughs> yeah. How was that like? Oh, God. Exhilarating. <laughs> so... <laughs> I've been a fan of Director X for a very long time. I just everything he stands for, uh, stopping gun violence in Toronto, and also like, like his organization, Operation Prefrontal Cortex. It's literally about mindfulness and meditation. Like, yeah, in my life I've been through a lot of trauma, and that shrinks your prefrontal cortex, so you make more impulsive decisions, right. and. His story was he got shot on New Year's and he wanted to understand why the person did it. And it's because like youth in Toronto are so fucking traumatized, not only just in Toronto, but like around the world, we're so traumatized, so much horrible things happen to us that our brain just shrinks and we make impulsive decisions and we stay in that cycle of abuse because, you know, but the way to kind of fix that and heal your brain is literally mindfulness meditation and just it's like scientifically proven which is so insane and it's actually helped me so much in my journey so yeah when i saw the like the it was like a call out for artists i had this like giant painting that i made for like another event right it was with like Eva's Phoenix. They were doing like a, no, Eva Satellite. We're doing a painting thing. And my mentor, Dion Fitzgerald, he's an incredible painter. Uh, we made like two giant paintings together and we're supposed to sell both of them at this event. Last minute, like the rose painting, I was like, I can't sell this painting. Like, I can't let it go. Like, I need it. And at first he was like, what the fuck? And then he was like, you know what? It's your painting. If you want to keep it, keep it. Right. So we case the painting, but I didn't sell it because I just knew in my soul that painting had a bigger purpose. Um, and it was a giant painting. It was one of the most beautiful ones I had. And it was in my room for a very long time, like on my wall. And when I saw the call out, I was like, you know what? This painting. So I donated the painting, um, all the proceeds went into like his organization. But I dressed up super pretty for that event. I was wearing like all silver, I was glittery as fuck. My hair was blue back then. But I wrote him a letter because I'm a very, like I'm not just gonna go up to him and like talk my shit, you know? So I wrote him a letter kind of explaining briefly like my journey and why I believed in this organization because I am proof that it fucking works and he read the letter he really liked what I wrote and he asked me which painting was mine and I was like this one and he's like okay let's take a picture in it I really like it so wow that was cool that's incredible, that's incredible. I, I know director x from legendary music videos a legend like um, he's a fucking legend from Toronto. Um, I initially knew about him from Sean Paul. I think <laughs> he might have done Game of the Light, Gay Gay, yeah. Game of the Light. But you know, he's done from Drake, like you name it. Like he's done everything. Um, Every I would love for him to make a music video for me one day. Like just again, manifesting, throwing it out into the universe. Like one day, like God, please. Hey. <laughs> The sky's the limit. So that's crazy. Nice guys, 2019. Tell me, seeking help and comfort. My heart was so fucking broken. Ah. How come? I tell you my dreams. I tell you I'm cold. You 
Oh god, I had a massive, massive, massive crush on this dude. Yeah. I'm trying to think of a nickname for him. Wasteman, okay. <laughs> Wasteman, wow, okay. I I really respected this person. I liked him a lot. Um, he's a very talented artist, incredible producer, incredible musician. Um, and he just caught my heart. And I was, like, I just, I was so young and I just liked him so much. Um, and he pretended to like, I guess, like me, or he showed interest. What happened was he showed a lot of interest in me. He kind of like love bombed me and was just like always there, like caring and like all this shit. Um, on my 19th birthday, I did a show, like it was a show slash party. It was actually pretty big. A lot of people came, including him. And, you know, stuff happened, like nothing like insane happened at that party. Well, actually a lot of insane things <laughs> happened, but that's for another time. <laughs> but we, we shared an intimate moment. Like we didn't like do anything, but we had like a kiss. And then after that, he just like completely pulled up, like, and just like ghosted, like disappeared. This man was a ghost. And then when I saw him the next time, he tried to like talk to me, come up to me. I was like, what the fuck? Like, how are you gonna do that to me and act like nothing happened? Like act like when I'm like one of your groupies or like, you know, like you have all these girls all over you 24 seven and you're just filling this fucking void. But regardless of that, I was just so broken hardened and I felt like, wow, like this person only cared for a little bit. Um, and it really hurt me. And that's how Night Skies was born. And wow. But at the same time, I'm so thankful to this person. Like, you know, even yesterday, I was kind of praying for him in a sense, because I was like, you know, if it wasn't for you, Night Skies would have never happened. So like, thank you for breaking my heart. <laughs> right, right. Um, and that's how you were inspired with those lyrics, making a song. Yeah, because it's like, it's about. sometimes people only care because they want something from you and then once they get it they don't give a fuck anymore right right got you got you god damn astrology I was just in astrologer my you can tell about our character and you can predict our future the future is not set it is manifested there's many different timelines that you can go on. You can quantum leap into whatever reality you fucking want. Um, this world is not necessarily real. There is certain destined events that can happen, but you have free will. I'm not only an astrologer, like I do like tarot readings, oracle cards. I channel a lot. I have visions. Sometimes I can speak to the other side. I'm a very witchy person, <laughs> but yeah. So, you know, someone like myself who wears an evil eye chain that has been brought down for my mom. So I've had this chain since a young boy. You know, I seen that you got the tattoo on your chest. I do, and I have a necklace here. I have an evil eye tattoo here on my finger, on my chest, and on my back. When I tell you, I've I've seen some weird shit. I've been psychically attacked a lot. Uh, when I started getting all these, before I got all these tattoos, I would have like, I started having really bad nightmares. Um, and it was right after me and this like night skies dude like ended it. There was kind of like a fallout. And I started having like nightmares, like of like attacks and just like demonic attacks and shit like that. Like it was pretty fucking dark. And I was at this point, like I was new in my, not new, but I was still young in my practice. So I didn't understand what was going on. I didn't know how to protect myself. Essentially, I'm like an open vessel and I'm letting all these 
energies in. So that's why I'm so protective of my time and my energy now. But I started having these horrible, horrible dreams. And I even had one. It was so weird. I was napping. And suddenly I'm in this dream where this waste man is talking shit about me with these two other girls that I know. And I just freaked out in the dream. I was trying to get away. And I fought both of them. <laughs> I fought everyone there. <laughs> I beat all of their asses in the dream. I was like, fuck you. And like, I called upon like, um, one of, I wouldn't, yes, they're a spirit guide, but like my family's Muslim, but they're Shia Muslim. So we have like certain imams that are very important to our practice. So for some reason, like I'm not very religious or like I don't consider myself like fully Muslim, but in my dreams, when I have these psychic attacks, like I call on these spirit guides, like these imams. And in that dream, like he, you know, usually they don't come to you, but I usually just wake up when I call on them. But in this specific dream where I fought Wasteman and these, you know, these girls, like he came to me and his face was made out of light because, you know, they don't show them, they don't show their true faces. They just have like light. And he said, you still have fight left in you. And then like, it felt like I was falling back into my body and I woke up shook as fuck, my head was spinning. I was like so shook and I told my mom and she started crying. She's like, Raisa, like I pray five times a day. I've never seen an imam in my dream. It's a very good omen. And not only that, it means like you have a special connection to them. And then in that moment, I realized, you know, you don't have to be a perfect Muslim to be protected. You don't have to, you know, I feel like the Muslim community is a little judgmental, especially someone who looks like me and is a musician, has tattoos, you know, lives a very alternative lifestyle. I'm also part of the LGBT community. But this Imam still came to me in my dream. He still, yeah. protected me. you know, so it just speaks volumes of like, you shouldn't judge people on what they look like or necessarily what they do or their sinful actions if their heart is in the right place if they're still connected to a higher power they're still going to be protected and at the same time my ancestors my parents um everyone like my lineage has been honoring these spirit guides for generations so it just kind of makes sense and i'm very thankful yeah i've had so many like nightmares or weird psychic attack dreams and i've called on the specific guide and I've woken up instantly. Wow. So I feel like there's divine protection there. I have the experiences, I know. I have learned all this astrology, tarot cards, oracle cards, and I still don't know what the fuck I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> what what do you mean? Like like the way that you're like the way that you're practicing it? No, I mean these tools are for self-discovery or to like you know, understand yourself better, understand the path you're going on. And I've studied it so in-depthly, but I still feel so lost sometimes. I still don't know what the fuck I'm doing. And that's just part of the human experience. Like um, some people look at like, they get so many tarot readings to be like, what the fuck should I do? And they're so indecisive. Um, I can relate to that. <laughs> but it's just like, at the same time, you can learn all this stuff. You can read your chart you can have someone you can have 10 different readers read your chart you can get hundreds of tarot readings you can do so many rituals and still feel lost and not know what you're technically doing in this life but that's the human experience like nothing is set in stone like you're supposed to manifest your own reality are you distracted a lot yeah i'm an I have a Pisces moon. I am a master of escapism. <laughs> Avoidance and escapism um, is my go. I get like scared and I run away a lot, but I also just, I'm in my own world. I like to just dream in my head. As a kid that like really helped me um, kind of get away from like the horrible things that were happening. Yeah. So I, I guess I just learned that as a coping mechanism. Yeah. And the reason why I ask is a lot of us like to escape, you know, our reality and we don't like to return. And even though we learn things, we go to school for things and, you know, 
we yes. adapt to a certain lifestyle, we still, still, still always fall back to our grounds that we're the most comfortable with. So that's the reason why I ask, you know, is change something that really, you know, shakes your world up, right? So for the viewers watching though, which by the way, I said, we are going to leave this for another podcast because it's, it's going to go on to another new world. And I think it's going to be amazing. And I'm actually really excited for it because I have about 19 questions right now that I want to ask about it, but I'm not going to. We're going to wait because we're going to get more on the show and we're going to make a group um, podcast on this. I have one astrologer in mind and one like, she's a spiritualist. She practiced Santeria. She's incredible. Um, I'm going to ask both of them. Like, if you really want to do this, I'll ask both of them. Please. Get them on a podcast and we can actually talk about this stuff because I really respect how like, Yes, you're interviewing like musicians and artists, but you also have this other side of you that's a little deeper. You know, for me, I've learned that you know what, I don't care. I'm gonna be pure on what I do and who I speak to. These are not interviews, these are not podcasts to me. These are conversations that you know us artists or creators or anyone in life can learn from one another. That's just what it comes down to. And Quite frankly, I want to learn so that I can share with my peers and people around me. So my biggest thing for me is, is like, it's not only an artist show, quote unquote, entrepreneur show. No, it's, it's, it's really anything and everything to just shine light on like the unknown, you know? Um, I've always been a young boy that have always asked so many questions in my upbringings. Um, Same. And- yeah. And so I'm at a point where I still have millions of questions left. And the reason why I'm here with you today and others um, is to just keep asking questions because, you know, we all have our own way of dictating life and um, we all have our own views. Facts. Prop me up. <laughs> to Toronto. What can we expect from you as an artist? Okay. I usually don't talk about my plans, but I'm trying like really- It's one of these podcasts. I'm trying really hard to manifest an EP. Exclusive. I'm calling out to all producers, like send me fucking beats. Um, I'm really- just trying to push and make this fucking happen because there's a lot of like positive um, astrology transits happening for artists. Like Jupiter went into Pisces, which is very good. And it's gonna be aligning with Neptune, which is incredible for musicians. So February to end of April, musicians get in the fucking studio. So that's, that's my plan. And man, I just, I haven't put out music for a year and I've written so many songs and I just, I needed to take that break to perfect my craft, but I'm at a point where I'm like, I need to release music. (laughs) So I'm praying and hoping, and there's been a lot of detours. Um, I was supposed to record it in Toronto, but I was like, fuck this shit. And I left. Um, I was supposed to record at a studio here and then I found out my ex worked there from Toronto and I was like, fuck that. You know, this happened yesterday, dude, it was so fucking weird. I was literally about to hit up the studio. They hit me up first and were like, oh, like you're a talented artist, like come record with us. And they're a new big studio and they have a lot of clout in Vancouver. So I was like, hell yeah, fuck yeah. And then my ex messaged me yesterday and Venus is retrograding right now. So he was like, I miss you. I love, I love, I love. And he's like, I moved to Vancouver. And I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> and then he's like, I'm working at this new studio. And I'm like, no, what studio? And he's like, he said the name of the studio. And it was the same studio. And I was shook. But also, that song came into my mind by, like, there must have been an angel by my side. So it could have been a lot worse. Like if I went in there not knowing and I seen him, I would have been like, what the fuck? 
<laughs> so it's like the fact that the universe made this dude reach out to me and tell me that he works there. So I would pick another, I have another studio, but it was just insane. Like divine protection. Divine protection. I love it. Beyond the View podcast, episode 30, your boy Cito, right side of the building. You know what time it is? Astrology, portrait artist, musician, superstar, Vancouver, West Coast. You know what time it is? Yo, stay tuned. Let's go. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> Night skies, fears and little hearts so cold.